Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, a man killed after a reported argument at a Soldier Road apartment complex. Police vowing to crack down on cash for gold businesses. The Constitutional Commission has its inaugural meeting. Plus, will roads be cleared in time for the opening of schools next week? Here are what officials have to say. We've got those stories and so much more coming up. I'm Paige McCartney, and MB12 starts right now. Welcome once again to MB12. Police are investigating a murder in Redland Acres. It's the fourth murder in four days. Homicide detectives were called to an apartment complex off Soldier Road this morning after a man in his 50s was shot to death. Vani Toot has the details. Less than 24 hours after a man in his 60s was robbed and killed, police raced here to Redland Acres off Sumner Street to investigate yet another murder. They say a man in his early 50s was gunned down following an argument with another male. Sometime around 9.30 a.m. this morning, uh, police received uh, reports of gunshots being discharged here in the Redland Acres just off Sumner Street. Officers responded uh, where they found a male suffering from uh, gunshot wounds. Uh, an investigation preliminarily is showing us that he was involved with an argument with another male when uh, he was resulted in him being shot. Police have not yet released the victim's identity. However, relatives identified him as Owen Julius Hanna. Superintendent Roll says his body was found lying outside an apartment complex which is currently under construction. His truck was parked a few feet away. The 51-year-old fisherman leaves behind seven children. One of them is a police officer. His mother, Althea Hanna, says she was at work when she got the dreaded phone call. And she told me, I have an emer emergency, come home. And I reach here, I see all these tapes of one. I say he dead, eh? because any time they cross off all these tapes, them, you know he died, he dead, the person died. And what was going through your mind at the time when you came home? I just trust God. I trust him. This is the only day I didn't cover him in prayer. This is the only day I didn't cover him in prayer. I all right. This is the only day I didn't cover him in prayer. All the rest of these, I cover him in prayer. That's the first person I pray for. Hannah says her son was a quiet person. However, she admits that their relationship was strained because she did not approve of his lifestyle. If you live a wild life, you mix yourself up. That's one of the reasons why we are not like that because you associate yourself with a lot of different people and whatnot, and that ain't for me. So I guess that's what makes us pull apart. No, it was close because he didn't want me to tell him anything. Though they did not have a good relationship, Hannah walked alongside the black hearse carrying her son's body as it drove away. This is the fourth murder recorded in four days. Superintendent Roll says that's a huge concern for police. Meantime, senior pastor of New Covenant Baptist Church, Bishop Simeon Hall, says the bloodshed must stop. Four and four days, yeah, that's a concern for us. But we are going to pursue this with the same vigor as we do all the others. And I uh, believe we could wrap this up within a reasonable time. And so I want to call on all persons concerned to uh, let's do all we can to undergird all the positive efforts to address uh, the demon of murder in the country. This latest murder brings the country's murder count for the year to 82. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonnie Toot. A grandmother is demanding answers after her Broom Street home and SUV were shot up on Monday night during a shootout between police officers and suspects. Marina Donatian said she was sound asleep at around 11 o'clock when she woke to the sound of gunshots outside her window. She says her two sons, daughter and five-year-old granddaughter, were in the house at the time. Donatian said they stayed on the floor until the gunfire ceased. There were a lot of shots. All you could hear was click, click, pow, click, click, 
Bow! I mean, a whole heap of shots. How long did this go on for? It's, to me, it sounded like forever. Because the children inside were scared. Stop it! I was scared. And when I listened, when I, listen, I heard, like, glass shuddering. So I said, Jesus, my Jeep. And when I... My husband went to open the door, and the policeman said, don't open the door, nobody come out, nobody come out. She later learned that police had chased some men into her yard and engaged in a shootout. Donatian's SUV, which was caught in the crossfire, was riddled with bullets and three of the windows were shattered. There were also bullet holes in the side of her home. With tears in her eyes, she said Monday's shootout brought back horrific memories of her son, Delando Morris's murder at their home three years ago. It's just a reminder, it's just a wake, it's just a, to, see, to know that it's been three years. This month made three years since my son passed away. And for gunshots, for me to wake up to gunshots, I don't feel safe in my home. And I have nowhere else to go. And head of the Central Detective Unit, Superintendent Paul Roll, confirmed that CDU officers were in the area patrolling when several people opened fire on them and ran into the woman's yard. The officers um, exercise constraint as there were children in the yard playing, you know, and um, this type of callous behavior by uh, criminals can't be tolerated and it can't be right, you know, for them to take a, a cheap shot like that at, at officers. We're here to protect. He said police did not catch those suspects. Roll said if police are found to be responsible for the damage done to that home and vehicle, they would pay for repairs. As the search continues for the two gunmen who killed a retired water and sewage worker after snatching his gold chain yesterday, National Security Minister Dr. Burdett Nodded says police will have to pay closer attention to the link between jewelry theft and cash for gold businesses in the country. Charisma Robinson has more. Dr. Nodded says he and Commissioner of Police Allison Greenslade are now intensely strategizing to see how best they can tackle the situation, which has now become a thorn in the side for many Bahamians. The National Security Minister told reporters today that he is very concerned about the increasing incidences of jewelry theft. He says if Tuesday's murder of a retiree is any indication of this trend, it's becoming very dangerous. I have had discussions already about alternatives or about what options we have in dealing with these, with this problem. I know that it is ridiculous to be in a situation where you can't wear a piece of jewelry because it may cost you your life. That's unacceptable. In an effort to crack down on the unregulated cash for gold and scrap metal businesses, the former government tabled the pawnbrokers and secondhand dealers bill in the House of Assembly in October 2011. Among other things, the legislation calls for business owners and dealers to verify customers' identities, maintain records, retain articles acquired for a minimum of 14 days, and report stolen items. Nottage says Says it would help if the law is properly enforced. For that to happen, he says police would have to visit these establishments and ask these businesses to provide the information which they are required to collect. Black like letters, who they bought it from, where, where they got it from, whether they had proof of ownership, etc., etc. Um, I, I know that that has been done in some cases. I'm not sure that it's being done uh, consistently. I notice, for example, that these cash for gold depots, I call them, are, are, are popping up all over the New Providence. Following a meeting with the National Security Minister this morning, Greenslade said police will take a more focused approach. We are now um, focused uh, uh, um, in looking at, at the legislation that exists and certainly our uh, existing procedures. Um, the incident that occurred yesterday where uh, a man lost his life uh, as a result of, of, of someone accosting him and, and attempting and certainly taking his jewelry from him is something that we have no tolerance for. There is also the issue of mobile cash for gold entities. Effective this day, today, we are going to be doing some work um, and certainly bringing closer scrutiny to the operations uh, of those establishments in a, in a very professional way. 
Um, and certainly we'll be doing all we can to discourage people from committing acts like that. Commissioner Greenslade says for the most part, police have had very good cooperation from cash for gold operators, but emphasize that focus should be placed on the criminals. What I believe is happening is you have a lot of young people that are not employed, and many of them are not looking for gainful employment, and they've taken to a life of crime, and they will get money in any means or any way that they can, and that is unfortunate. And so if it's not an armed robbery, it's a snatching of your jewelry and converting it to, to cash. I guess the point I'm making in all that I've just said is, if one didn't have a cash for gold outlet, but was hell-bent on committing crime, that person would still snatch your jewelry and pawn it to someone else who's willing to pay a lower price. Nonich and Greenslade spoke to reporters following the start of a two-day school-based policing workshop at police headquarters this morning. Nonich told school administrators that he expects the program to have a direct impact on the home, the wider community, and by extension, the nation. Reporting for MB12, I'm Charisma Robinson.